Hey, Ronnie. Hello. Uh, you're 60 years old, huh? I am. You're now obsolete. I'm sorry. I, I'd agree. <laughs> uh, we have a list of things that are no longer relevant to the new generation and soon to become obsolete next on Men Are So Smart. As we progress together as a society, the newer generation tends to hold on to or abandon certain things from the previous generation. When we heard that Budweiser has fallen again in its market share of domestic sales in the U.S., we were wondering what else is either obsolete or becoming obsolete anymore. So let's take a look at some things that are no longer relevant to the new generation. Well, number one, like you said, Budweiser. It is, yes, America's beer. It is, however, becoming obsolete as newer generations are seeking more interesting beers to drink. Budweiser fell to number four in domestic sales in the U.S. Uh, that represents a shift in what millennials are interested in. Guess no, Budweiser is no longer the king of beers. How can you proclaim that? You That's know, like saying, men are so smart is the king of YouTube. <laughs> I can say it, <laughs> but it doesn't mean it. No. Uh, I, I know that, you know, all the IPAs beers. and yeah. everything else are really taking a big hit. Sure. And I have to imagine also Budweiser is one of the biggest uh, advertisers in the NFL. Oh, to be sure, yeah. And NFL has taken a gigantic hit. Yeah. So... That could be going hand that in hand. That may influence that data right there. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you remember, Ronnie, when we were kids and we'd go on vacation and mom and dad would take photos? Yes. And then we'd get back and unpack and then we'd drive to the local blue photo roofed mat. photo mat. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Drive through pictures. Yep. You'd drop off your film. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's how my aunt Nancy from New Jersey would say it. Film. <laughs> film. And, and three weeks later... Bam! Instantly, pictures. Yes, wow. Technology. Uh, in an age where your digital camera on your phone can shoot at or near 4K resolution, there really isn't much need for film nowadays. Photo film peaked in the year 2003 with almost a billion rolls of film produced. Today, it represents about 2% of that rate of the population. That is crazy. But, you know, even professional photographers... They don't use film. It's all digital. It's all digital. When you look at your wedding photos. They give you a stick. Yeah. Yeah. It's just everything is digital. Wow, yeah. It's crazy. Who would have thought? Yeah. Well, this is another one. Though. And on your phone. Yes. Yes. But this one it will probably not shock you either. And you may not have ever thought about it. Paper maps. What are those? Yeah, there are these things that you kept folded up in your glove box. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah, when you were going to go visit San Diego. <laughs> oh, yeah. You had a San Diego map in your glove box. A map, you say? Yes, you would go to AAA. On paper? Free map to AAA. Yeah, somebody... <laughs> I saw a show, and it was very funny. <laughs> uh, a bunch of millennials worked at a, an outdoor store, and uh, one of the older gentlemen pulled out a map, and the guy goes... When did Google start printing these? <laughs> you know, I have, I have in the last week alone, I've had four people that have come into the store where I work and ask for directions. Hmm. Seriously, you don't have a phone? Yeah, serious. Come on. Do you? What do you have? A flip phone? This is the year 2018, my friend. Was it Dr. Dave by any chance? <laughs> yeah, could have been. <laughs> Very easily could have been. Yeah, well, and with all the advancements in phones these days, the navigation systems are amazing. Um, for example, if I'm going someplace, I went the other day, I drove out to El Grove uh -huh. to our range. Uh, I put the address in there in my app, my navigation app, because Waze takes me around construction and around traffic. So it finds the quickest, fastest, easiest way from point A to point B. I can't imagine ever not using my navigation anymore. Yeah, there's just no reason for it. No. Unless, of course, you're in the middle of Iowa and you have no cell service. That would be a problem. You might need a map in that case. Yeah. Just head north. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know where north is. You're probably frankly. heading east. Nor probably. do I need to. <laughs> All right, next up is the landline. Do you have a landline in your house? No. We still do because the cable company 
gives it to us for free. And honestly, Ronnie, I don't even know what the number is. <laughs> I don't even know what the number is. I don't think I've ever used that phone, ever. Well, we had one up till about, I don't know, four or five years ago uh -huh. when everybody in the house had their own cell phone and the only calls we were getting on it were sales calls. Yeah. I said, you know what? It's not worth it. It doesn't cost, it's like nine ninety five a month or something for it. But we weren't, I wasn't appreciating it. But I know that now some of the people that still have landlines, they have to have them for their alarm system. Oh, yeah. So, depending. I guess uh, that can't be done on Wi-Fi, huh? Uh, it, so I had somebody come out because my mom's house has been broken into so many times since it's vacant. He told me, just get yourself a, a super inexpensive cell phone and hook it up to a charger and put it up in the attic. Because now cell phones can also be used to, you know, transmit to uh, the alarm company mm -hmm. if there's an intrusion. So, Makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a possibility. But, again, it's just the death of the landline. And speaking of the death and obsolescence of things, paper money, Ron. Yeah. Uh, you know the boy wonder, the producer for the radio show? Yes. He's been my producer for, I don't know, six years I don't think I've ever, ever seen him with a dollar bill. And we make <laughs> bets all the time. <laughs> Always. And you know what he pays me in coin? Bitcoin? Yes. No. <laughs> no, quarters. God, that's annoying. <laughs> that, well, we make some big bets, too. Sometimes $5. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a quarters. lot of quarters. Oh, dang. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Weigh you down. Uh, no one of the younger generation carries money anymore. It's all put on the card. Yeah. Do you remember the time when only really rich people had uh, credit cards? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and now, and, and oh, could you please sign here, Mr. Gallagher? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And now your phone does the same thing. Yeah. You probably have uh, the cards built into your phone. I do. Uh, Apple Pay is, I have Apple Pay. is very popular. It's getting to the point where you really won't need. My bank just recently told me I can send a picture of a check and it will be deposited. Yeah, it takes a little longer, I'm told, though. I mean, that's kind of crazy. You don't have, you know, they're turning people into hermits where mm. you don't have to leave your house anymore. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, so paper currency, another one of those uh, blasts from the past that just won't be around. It's going the way of the dodo bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we talked about this in a previous episode, but cashiers. Yeah. They're becoming obsolete. Why? Because of self-serve checkout. I really, that's how, that's my preferred way of leaving a store. Walmart has them. Uh, Sam's Club has them. If a store has them, I'm going to use them. Uh, and, you know, it's, cashiers are kind of, cashiers are prone to mistakes. I mean, not that people, and you're counting on people's honesty when they self-check out. Mm -hmm. But, it's kind of the same thing with uh, uh, bank tellers and ATM machines. Um, my, I remember my bank used to have six tellers. Now you walk in and there's two. Yeah. You can do a lot of your banking on the outside of the bank. As you should. Uh, yeah. I know people have con concerns about security and such. And, and granted, they're warranted. But right. gosh, in terms of convenience and living in the moment it's what's available why not use the technology yep. if it saves you a trip to your bank you well know. and amazon now has their famous amazon go uh you just walk into the store and grab it and you don't even have to stop at a uh, checkout counter mm -hmm. that's uh, right pretty pretty amazing service so and i think that that's you know all these things are just going to be the going the way of the dodo bird obsolete marriage mm, yep. it seems that the next generation is also abandoning certain institutions. The one that may be most concerning is that of marriage. There is a sharp decline in the number of people getting married in the United States over the past few years. Whether it's the increasingly prohibitive costs involved in a wedding or simply a lack of interest. <laughs> you mean I got to get off the couch to get married? <laughs> I'm not down for that. Uh, it's <laughs> been an interesting trend. To see take place, to be sure. Yeah. They don't need to be married. Well, and I know I have a I have a wedding coming up in June that... Oh, uh, you're getting married again? Uh, my daughter. Oh, she's having a wedding. Yes. Okay. 
And uh, it is. It's expensive. Yeah. But And she's concerned about the expense, and although she doesn't have to pay for it. And I told her, you know what? It's just a big send-off. It's a big party. Don't worry about the money. Just enjoy the day. It's a special day. Ronnie? I, I think... Ronnie? Yeah. I still haven't gotten an invitation. What? Oh, uh, well... Do you think it's in the mail? I'll give you an STD. That's a save the oh, day. Oh, to save the day. <laughs> I wasn't sure how that was going to be applied. <laughs> I won't take that chance. Another thing that's obsolete, golf. Yeah, or at least it's getting that way. Yeah, and for the longest time, it was immensely popular, oh, wow. and it happened to coincide with uh, the, the forthcoming of, of Tiger Woods. Right. You know, that did a lot. It was a big shot in the arm. I, I know golf. there were times when you could not get... You, right. You couldn't get a, you know, your foursome couldn't get on there if you didn't have yeah. something set up in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, golf is an industry that really now is not getting as much play as it used to. New generations are losing interest in the old sport. Sales of clubs and rounds have been going down dramatically. Uh, game of golf is a pastime for all people, but the newer generation may be in a little a little more interested in other things like video, video games. games. Mm -hmm. I, they can play golf on the video screen. For sure, and I've yeah. done that. It's fun. It is fun. <laughs> Next up, the electric guitar. Oh, what? Obsolete? Uh, Are you kidding me? I have like six of them. The electric guitar is an icon of the music that helped shape this great nation, damn it. I threw that in. <laughs> I saw that. As it happens, it's also well into its own downfall. In the past decade or so, sales for guitars, with Ronnie being ex exempt, Thank you. have fallen by about 30%. While we can't pinpoint the exact cause of this, we imagine the rise of electronic music, as well as continuous cuts to arts programs in schools, are the likely culprits. When we were growing up, we were guitar god worshipers. Yeah. Jimmy Page, yep. or Clapton. Oh my God, I, I can go back even further. George Harrison. Oh and, yeah. God. I mean, it was something to be a guitar player. Eddie I, Van Halen. Oh man, mm. the list goes on and on. You know, maybe it's that you have to commit to learning an instrument, and the millennials just aren't going to go for that. There's not that. Maybe they're not exposed to it as much. Right. Mm. Yeah. Same thing. It, you can do it on a video game. You have Guitar Hero. You can play guitar on, you know, on that. It's not the same thing, guys. It's not guys. the same. But you know what? Music in general, at least the music that a lot of millennials listen to, is more electronic. Techno. When I hear music, per se, I don't hear a lot of individual instruments. Um, and it is. It's kind of sad that music as we know it may be, you know, might be on its way out. Kind of sad. <laughs> I could tell you that. When I, I'm at a point now in my life where, I hear I play songs, on a radio station, that's primarily '70s and '80s music. <laughs> and, um, the '70s and '80s music is now considered oldies, and I was playing yeah. those songs when they were newies. Yeah. How do you think that makes a guy feel? Yeah. No, it's obsolete. That's bad. Next up, motorcycles. I get it. Yeah, Harley Davidson was once the symbol of the open road. Uh, many people would imagine taking their taking to the road on one of these hogs. The iconic brand represents about half of the large I'm bike sorry. sales in the U.S., but sales of Harleys have been slipping. Surely, if it stays on this trend, there may not be many of us on the road in the next decade or so. And I've got a motorcycle sitting right there. I've not ridden it in 10 years. It's to the point... With cell phones out there, it's so much more. It was dangerous back then, trust me. It's so much more dangerous now because of all the distracted driving. Um, my future son-in-law has a scooter that he rides around San Francisco. He wants to get a motorcycle, and I am desperately trying to convince him otherwise. Yeah, It's just, it's not safe. Um, once a week... In your local town, somebody is dying from a motorcycle accident. If you, you know, watch your Facebook feed or you watch the news, it happens. People tell you all the time, but I'm a great motorcycle rider. It's not you. It's not you. Uh, and, I, and I will tell you this, that riding a motorcycle, 
made me a much better car driver because your head is constantly on a swivel. Yeah. You have to take in your surroundings. Uh, every vehicle around you is a potential hazard. Mm-hmm. Um, it does. It makes you much more aware when you're in your car. But it takes very little. Somebody bumps you off your motorcycle ever so slightly, and that is catastrophic. I was thinking back to a day in 1978, I guess it was, summer, hot day. I had to go to work. And then to get there, jumped on the motorcycle in a pair of shorts. That's it. Yep. No helmet. Yeah. No shirt. Yep. No shoes. <laughs> Nothing. And now, look at what we've come to. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and look, I'm a huge proponent of, of helmets. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, if there's anything that might save your life in a crash, it would be that helmet. Yeah. And having it gives you a little better percentage, but it it's not always going to save your life. No. Especially when your head hits that asphalt yep. at 70 miles an hour and you start bouncing. I almost lost an ear that way. All right, so in our list of obsolescent things, we now come to our final one, which is, I think, extremely important. Manners. Huh. Manners are becoming obsolete. Manners are the most egregious thing of all to fall into uh, obsolescence. obsolescence, Sorry. For some reason, the previous generation must have done a horrible job of teaching manners to their offspring. Now, we have an entire generation of people who don't say excuse me or please or thank you or hold the door for somebody. What were you thinking when you were bringing these kids up? You didn't have time? It's really, it's kind of... It's kind of sad, but it is. It's it's the generation of no matter what you do, great job. Everybody gets a participation trophy, um, and there's you're not held accountable. And it really, it's leading to a generation of really awful, awful people. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't see. I don't see an end in sight. You know, in my life, I was. When both of my parents worked, I was raised by my grandma. And um, if I didn't show manners, I'd get smacked upside the head. Yeah. So hard to make you dizzy. Yeah. You know, hold, you hold the door for a woman. That's what you do. Yeah. If I ever, eh, I hate that. If I ever <laughs> see you do that again, it'll be the last door you don't open. Yeah. I'll close the door for you. Yeah, I, that would be my grandma. I just really think that, uh, I mean, just as a rule, there are so many things that we had done. If you're riding a bus and a woman gets on, you give them your Good seat. seat. Um, that are, it just it does not happen. Yeah, there's none of that anymore. I mean, even on the roadway, oh my God, uh, if somebody so two examples just yesterday alone, I turned on my turn signal to change lanes. The person that was behind me in the lane I wanted to get into sped up. Naturally, yeah. So that I couldn't get in. Right. God forbid you should be in front of that person. Yeah, yeah. And then we come to a spot where the traffic is backed up. Somebody is wanting to make a left-hand turn in front of us into mm-hmm. the driveway. And inst- and I left a plenty of gap for this car to pull in. The person next to me pulled right up to completely block, block them up. off in the driveway so they could not pull in. Like, no manners. Really? 15 feet. You're giving up 15 feet. But somebody would be ahead of me. Lord. I don't know, Ronnie. I'm not going to go into how we need to change the world. I, I gave up on that long ago, bud. Yeah. You know, the only thing that you can do is be the best you you can be. You lead by example. I And that's what I try to do. And I try to... You know what? Again, yesterday I left a big gap for somebody, and hopefully, maybe somebody saw that, and maybe the person that pulled all the way up goes, "Oh, rut row, I did. That's bad." A lot of things are becoming obsolete. We've mentioned them, but let me leave you with this: integrity is what you do when no one is watching. Right. Wise words. This has been another episode of Men Are So Smart. 
all of the information you'll find uh, about us below. We ask that if you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up, please. Appreciate it. And if you give it a thumbs up, think about subscribing to our channel. It may not mean much to you, but it means a lot to Ronnie and I. Yep. Okay. So, uh, until the next time, I am Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Felt that one. Felt good. It was good. Thanks.